<clears throat> okay, uh, let me know if you can hear me now. Uh, something strange is going on. I believe you should be able to hear me now. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Yeah, I see the audio. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me know. So it's going to take a few moments. <clears throat> yes, now it looks like it works. But I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, so when you see me like this, it works. And when I go here, it won't work. So let me try and fix that for a moment. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, can you hear me now? I think now it should be good on both <laughs> ends. Yeah, so I was looking at my bar and I saw that it was extremely uh, low for some reason. Never had that happen before, so every, every time is a new adventure, so to speak. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, so I was just saying, and thank you uh, for the kind words, I was just saying uh, that what we'll do is um, look at some paintings here and talk about style. I know this is something that concerns many people, uh, how to develop your own style, uh, how to uh, kind of grow into your style. Uh, and it's something that I think really takes up a lot of space in people's minds and it shouldn't. Um, now let me do one more thing here. I just need to uh, crop myself so that there's a little more room here. Let me just do this uh, from the bottom. We'll go like this. Good. So now that's better. Okay, now I do have to give... Uh, there's still an echo. Mm -hmm. Well, there shouldn't be an echo. Um, well, let me know if it, if it becomes... I don't know if it gets better. Um, I don't know. I can try putting the laptop closer to me. Maybe you'll hear this uh, better. But uh, in any case, <laughs> hopefully it will fix itself. Sorry. Uh, audio is definitely not my speciality. Now, I do need to give a quick disclaimer, as you've probably seen uh, in the news, the situation here is, isn't too good, uh, to be quite frank. Uh, we may actually have um, an alarm going on. Uh, it's just something that happened for the last two days. Um, and if it does happen, uh, I'll just have to go to run into a safe space. So you just let me know. Um, I'm, 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 I'm considering if I should mute it or let you hear it. Uh, so let me know what you prefer. It's pretty loud, uh, but I don't know how strongly it will go through uh, via the live stream. But uh, in any case, let me know. If you want me to leave the sound on, that's great. Um, I mean, it, it takes like a millisecond. If I have to run fast and I won't make it, then yeah. Uh, let me play around with the volume of it. So it's going to go a little lower now because I do see there is a bit. It's too high. I don't know what happened to the default audio. It's a little weird. Um, in any case... Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for letting me know there's no echo. Thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. And for the, um, for the best wishes. Yes, it is a bit of a challenging time here. I actually don't want to talk about it too much because um, it's been on my mind for the last two days, 24-7. Uh, so it's, I want to use this stream as more of an escapism for me. Uh, so we will be quite uh, to the point with our topic. Um, but in any case... Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, okay, so cool, cool, cool. Let's see who's uh, in the chat and then we'll get started. Um, I do want to talk about, let me give you kind of a rundown. I want to talk about how to create your own style, um, how I think it is created very naturally, um, the questions that are important to ask yourself if you want to figure out your own style. Um, we're going to obviously talk about my car challenge, which I wasn't planning on using this way, but it just happen to be a really good way of demonstrating this. Um, and I'll talk about the things that I see here in my work. And don't worry, I will hold it up closer. It will be clearer in just a few moments. But uh, a couple of things that I noticed that developed in my style, thanks to it. And hopefully this can help you maybe apply this to yourself. Okay. Now I do see that the camera is doing the autofocus again. So let me fix that. Uh, just one second. I don't know why it got back to it. Video settings, advanced. And we will get rid of the focus. No autofocus. No need to. That's good. Okay. So that's better, hopefully. 
Um, so let's see who's here. We'll go from top to bottom. Ambi, thank you. Dave, thank you. James, thank you. Christine Bourgeois, thank you. Uh, of course, I am. Thank you for the um, kind words. Uh, thank you, everyone, for letting me know there was no sound. Um, Okay, Oliferous, yes, the sound is back. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm very happy to have you here, uh, hearing me loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, Kelvin, my friend, I hope you're doing well. John, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Suruchi Bide, or Bide. Hi, Leron, hope you're safe. Thank you, Kelvin Zero. It only took two years of painting. Ian Jackson, a good day uh, to you all. To develop your style, Kelvin, right? Yeah. yeah, only two years of work to become an overnight success. Um, okay, and there might be some noises from the outside. We actually have uh, like a mini barbecue thing going, uh, so I don't think it should come through too much. And hopefully everything is fine. Uh, Kunal uh, says, "How are you, Liron? Thank you. I'm well. Hello, for so many you've been in our thoughts, brother. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been rough. Uh, Dave says, change camera angle. Why is it this is bad? Can you see too much of my chin?" Um, I don't mind hearing the raid siren. Okay, maybe I'll leave it. Uh, it's not a raid, but still. Uh, Balram sketches. I think style evolves naturally. One gets attracted to certain styles and subjects, and, there, and these preferences evolve as the technique improves. And as one keeps painting, uh, the path clears itself. It's, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Um, Deep Krishan uh, says, hello, Oliferous, leave the sound on, I will. Uh, Dave says, nice to see you, Liron. Uh, Lola and Peace says, so nice to see your face. Take care. Great to learn from you this week. Uh, and Arijit says, love from India. So thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to ask as I go through this. Now, I want to talk about style. This is something I have talked about before. Um, I do believe, just to lay down everything on the table, I do believe style is something that is carved out rather than discovered. Uh, and it's something that is usually on the minds of younger people. And it makes sense. And I see this. Uh, in our local painting groups on Facebook and different places, people do feel like uh, it's something they have to discover. And I get that because when you're just getting started and you're struggling with the fundamentals and you, you just don't get the results you want, you look at what you create and you look at someone else who has a very well-defined style and you ask yourself, how will, I, uh, how will I achieve that kind of a thing? And it can be a little frustrating too. The point is though, I think that to, to really... Uh, cultivate your own style and carve it out. It's about discovery and it's also about fundamentals, which is an interesting twist uh, because a lot of people will encourage you to just paint whatever you want and let it come to you and go with the flow. That's partially true to me. Uh, I do believe that a lot of it does come from the fundamentals. So you do have to uh, practice the basics and really master them. And if you've been following me for a while, you've guessed that I'm gonna say it. Uh, it's not as simple as just painting and painting and painting. You do want to develop a basic understanding of shapes uh, and what looks good, of drawing accurately, relatively accurately. There are a lot of people that master a very, the very basic uh, kind of skill of drawing, getting things onto paper quite accurately. It doesn't have to be elegant or stylized, and that's good enough. Um, but for others um, that are more interested in that, yes, you may want to go that route, uh, and you have to kind of practice the fundamentals of your medium. So in that case, watercolor, you don't want to learn a lot about water to paint ratio. You want to learn a lot about uh, the different uh, techniques and timing. Timing is of key in watercolor. And all of these fundamental things that you have, that the practice session isn't as interesting. You just fill in an entire page with wet and wet, small wet and wet patches. Um, or you fill in an entire broad, um, page with brush marks, straight lines, curved lines, whatever you want to do. Um, a lot of it, and maybe I'll just flip through these just to keep the view more interesting. Uh, a lot of this comes through, uh, comes from practicing those techniques in a very grueling way. You will learn a lot of them by practicing, but I am a big proponent of deliberance. So be deliberate in your practice. Um, practice monochromatically, specifically. Practice uh, shapes, do a specific practice session of shapes. Um, you really wanna isolate the skill you're trying to improve. And I believe that if you do that, if you work on the fundamentals and then you spend a lot of time painting and listening to yourself and following the things you wanna do, you will discover your style. Um, I wanna break down style because there is something interesting to it. Um, in addition to just the way you paint, uh, there is a lot to be said about the vision 
there is a lot to be said about materials and subject matter. So vision may come down to the things you want to represent in the scenes. And if you enjoy one aspect of it, that's the aspect you'll try and represent always. So to me, or more often than not. So to me, that is light and shadow and strong contrast, which is why I'm doing a lot of these scenes. For other people, it may be um, a stronger mood, a more moody mood, a more um, wildness with the colors, doing these crazy sunsets that paint everything yellow and red. That could be another thing. Um, that's in terms of vision. Then we have the materials, which uh, is surprising, but the materials do affect the final result. Um, to me, a lot of it is brushes, but also paints and paper. Um, paper, obviously, cold press, hot press will influence your end result. Um, it looks different. It just simply looks different. And, and the paint behaves a little differently, of course. Uh, brushes are key for this because uh, it really does change your kind of signature, how you paint. Um, people who use thinner, longer brushes tend to get a certain result. Others use smaller, more synthetic, uh, springy brushes, get different results. It really is like, for example, here's, uh, here's an interesting thing. Like if you use more of this kind of a thing, or maybe this Chinese calligraphy brush, uh, as opposed to something a little tighter like this, or even something with shorter sable, not, this is an extreme example, obviously, but shorter sable, synthetic. Uh, these all will lead to different results, and it is a matter of choice. Um, and you can see this if you, for example, look at uh, Tim Wilmot, the way uh, he paints. And he uses a lot of these kind of um, thick mop brushes. And his edge tends to, the, the, the tip of them is not perfectly pointed. It has a bit of a linear feel to it and you see it a lot of it in the, in the shapes that he creates uh, so that's something that does play a role in your kind of signature and yes style is much more than signature it's just signature of brush marks it's just one of many aspects but my point is it does influence the result you have people who use more granulating paints uh, and that tends to lead to a different result too. Uh, you have people that use uh, mediums as well uh, to lengthen the wetness. For example, if you use more gum arabic, you'll lengthen the, the, the wetness period of the paint. You'll, you'll get longer time to work into it. And, and so all of these things do uh, affect your end result and, and as a result of it, your style. So there is a lot to think about, but the basic idea is I do believe that the style is carved out. Okay, now we will talk about um, what you want, and I'm, I will connect it to this, to the uh, cars challenge, uh, because asking yourself what you want to portray is a, is a good idea. Okay, now let me go over the chat a bit, and then we'll go back and continue to talk about what you want and how that affects your style. Um, so thank you so much. Um, Ian, it goes back to default setting every time you switch off the computer. That's weird. I, I never had that happen to me, and I Hmm, do I switch it off? Sometimes I switch it off, sometimes I don't. Uh, no, no, you were talking about sirens and uh, mute. Oh, okay, okay. Marjorie Johnson, there is one thing I notice about people's art. I often call, I can tell if it is created by a male or female. Nor yours is definitely male, enough for uh, this peanut gallery. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I can say that sometimes I will notice patterns, but sometimes it can be pretty surprising. Um, one, one interesting example is Keiko Tanabe. Uh, and she paints in a very Alvaro Castanet-esque style, uh, which I like, but she does have her own uh, interesting twist on it. Uh, her color selection is a little different. She has more green and purple uh, as opposed to red and yellow. So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. It's an interesting discussion. Um, I definitely have this boldness of values that I mentioned earlier that, that I go very strong on them, and it's a part of I suppose it's a part of what I believe makes my paintings look good, which is why I do it. Funny enough, I can appreciate different people's art that doesn't have that. But uh, to me, it's something I like seeing, I suppose. So, yeah. Uh, Mamhu Sketch, nice to see you again, Liron. Thank you. Uh, Wolfgang Sol, hi, Liron. Greetings from Germany. Ian, it takes years to develop. Um, and when you think you have something comes along and changes what you are. That's amazing. Yeah, that, that is a great insight. Uh, even if you think at some point that you've reached... Um, your style. Very often I'll find that, and you know what, that's a very interesting point, Ian. Uh, I'm happy you brought it up because I think we have a lot of choice in that matter. 
Uh, some people kind of choose to settle into a specific style they, they enjoy, while other people uh, may want to constantly innovate. And I do see that there is some value in innovation. I do feel like a lot of the people who never really stop and rest uh, in a good way. Uh, you reach something that you believe is, this is it, this is, I, I found it. Um, but then if you have a willingness to let that go and try and do something a, a little different and challenge yourself, I find there's a lot of growth in it. And the authentic always comes back out. So even if you take a bit of a detour to try something different and you find out it wasn't for you, it will go into enhancing your own style. That's truly what I believe. And it's, a, it's why I encourage people to paint a lot of different styles deliberately. Uh, once you reach a point where I think where I'm at, maybe six or seven years into watercolor, I am very, um, very keen on trying to paint different styles of other people, even though they don't come naturally to me. Because I think once you get inside a box, it's a bit hard really to see what's out of it, uh, what's outside. And by doing this, painting other people's styles, you see what's outside. But here's the key. The skill you learn by doing something vastly different will feed back into your style and it will turn it into more elegant, more beautiful, more, um, more interesting, more yours, believe it or not. That's, that's funny uh, how that works. Uh, but yeah, that's a great point, Ian. Uh, Balram, thank Liron, thanks, Liron, enjoying your live sessions. Thank you, Dave. Liron needs more likes. Yeah, if you're here and you're enjoying the video, please drop a like. It helps more people discover it. And by the way, I didn't mention, but today's live stream is going to be a little short. I'm going to cut it uh, after 45 minutes or so, which leaves us basically 25 more minutes. So I know it's quite short. I'll, I may go up till five uh, my time, which means 40 more minutes. We'll see about that. We'll see. Um, Arthur Koopman is highly good to see you. A bit exhausted after a big painting project. Makes me want to paint a simpler style. Yes, 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 exactly. And go with that. That's the thing I encourage. So to me, after I'm painting a lot of uh, to me, it's the other way around mo for the most part. I paint smaller uh, and then after a few uh, of these, I feel like I have to paint something a little more, not necessarily larger, but slower and more deliberate. Uh, I feel like I have to um, challenge myself to do something uh, a little heavier, so to speak. Uh, so it's funny how it's the other way around for me. And I do encourage you to go with that feeling uh, and, and embrace it and, and go for it because you will produce something interesting in a simpler style. Uh, Scars, uh, how do how do you, how do we run? Good to see you. Safe. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm I'm warning you again. There may be an alarm, and I may have to just do this, drop these, and, and run. So just to let you know, and sorry for the volume if it's gonna go, uh, if it's gonna if it's gonna peak. Um, Arthur says Yong Hong Jong is very good with the Chinese brush. Yes, that is true. And I find that this uh, brush really creates, as you say, textured edges. Just a lot of the paper texture is visible, and that's really a staple of many people, uh, you'll notice, am I hearing stuff? No, you'll notice that, um, um, wow, I forgot, I'm blanking on the name. Um, I'll remember in a moment, That's, uh, it's, a, it's a bummer. Like I have so many artists swirling around in my head, but uh, there is an artist whose style is based heavily on, um, on, on dry brush marks and you see it in the final product all the time. It's really, uh, it's a staple of theirs and, and I love it. It looks really, really good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Richard Bennett, so glad to see you're all right, Liron. Thank you, Richard. Kelvin, your style equals your personality plus subject you love plus materials you love plus all artists that you admire plus time. Yeah, that's a great equation. Uh, and maybe you wanna, uh, uh, you wanna multiply it by time instead of adding it up. Uh, I think that's a it's, a, it's a more accurate way arithmetically to look at it. Uh, Hain says, hi, how, how are you doing? Thank you, I'm doing well. Pence Palacio, highly wrong. Uh, greetings from uh, Yangon, Burma. Uh, says, Hain, uh, Scars, that red truck is killer. Thank you. Uh, Sergio Gonzalez, Gaita, Gait, uh, morning. John Woodcock, hello. Uh, greatly wrong, listening and watching from Tottenham in London. And Dave, uh, Dave Lowe, I've always found it difficult to see my style. I find every painting is done differently depending on subject. However, I did hear recently that it's hard to hide your style. Yes, uh, Dave, I don't know if you heard it um, aimed at your uh, artwork, but um, uh, it's so true. Way before I started noticing my style, other people commented that they'll definitely be able to tell what paintings are mine. Out of a you know a lineup of paintings, they'll know this one's the ones. And uh, it's interesting. Um, 
we're just oblivious to to our own style as just like we're oblivious to many things about ourselves and um, I think that's one of the advantages of building an audience and having people you communicate with who um, who look at your art and talk to you and, and give you feedback which is why I really appreciate you and everyone who's here really really and I knew by the way this live stream will get fewer views uh, because it's not a painting uh, live stream uh, which is fine I, I needed this one to, to kind of talk and Sometimes I'll, 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 I even consider doing live streams where I just paint and shut up because uh, I need to focus. We'll see, we'll do something like that in the future and you can just chill in the chat and talk among yourself and maybe I'll take a break and once in a while uh, talk a bit. Um, yeah. Sipping my coffee, let's see. Um, I should really mark the messages I got to. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dave, your style does show, uh, it's just hard for you to see. Uh, Nadia, I've had several people tell me that they recognize my pieces uh, by my style. Now I need to recognize my style myself. Others see it more than I see it myself. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Corvette yellow, very, very nice painting. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, John. Uh, I'll Let me show it to you up close. And I will, I promise I will show you some more works up close. Uh, this uh, was uh, a big break, breakthrough for me. I'm, I'm going to talk about it just in one second, but the way these shadows work was really big for me. It was hard for me to get this balance of smooth uh, and hard edges. And this was the one of the first successes in the challenge. Funny enough, I started the challenge and every painting was a real screw up in my eyes. Uh, but then that one uh, was the first mini win that I got. So yeah. Um, uh, Marjorie Johnson, if this is going to be short, can I wait for uh, breathing therapy? Can, therapy can miss my... Uh, weekly art fix. Can I wait for? Um, so I'm gonna go for about 35 more minutes. This is probably what's gonna happen. Uh, so plan accordingly. Uh, Umar Tank. Hi everyone watching from the Philippines. Keep safe please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Les Sanchez. I tried painting what I see around me and I'm glad I listened to your uh, live a couple of weeks ago. Cool. I'm happy it helped. Uh, I hope you can critique it once. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, everyone uh, uh, a quick uh, PSA. <laughs> Uh, announcement to everyone, send me your paintings. I will do another critique video. I will be happy to get as many as I can uh, and get through them. The last video was about, I think, 12 people and something like 16 or 20 paintings. Uh, so just send them over. I'll be happy to review them uh, in the next video, probably in the next two weeks or so, if I have enough to look at. Uh, Marjorie, would love to see in a future show uh, some multiple glazing. Any possibility? Yeah. Uh, so do you mean like thinner, um, thinner layers of multi multiple thinner layers of uh, light glazing? Yeah, I can do that. Calvin, yeah, I don't think you can actually notice your own style until other people pointed it out because your style just eventually becomes that uh, is how you paint. Yeah, I got my style by trying to throw out as many details as I can. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go over my paintings and you tell me in the chat if you notice anything. Okay. Um, and, and you may notice something different than, than what I notice. Mm. Or you may see the same thing. Now, I, I don't want to make this fully about me. I want you to be able to take from this... Uh, do I have coconut cream on my mustache? No, I'm good. Um, I want you to take from this things that can actually apply to your salt. So this is the very first car I did. Um, now, I'm trying to look for things to be proud of in my paintings no matter what. Um, and even though at the time I was disappointed and you can even go check out my story from that day uh, and let me show it to you with this camera too. You can even check out uh, my story from that day and you'll see that uh, I, I said, should I restart the challenge? So that was funny. Now I do have pictures of all of these, but I did not prepare them in advance. Um, so we'll have to do with this. Hopefully you can see them well. Um, if if you really want to see a picture of one of them, just let me know and I'll, I'll find it. If I have it on my uh, Mac, I will try and show you the actual picture. Um, so yeah, uh, this was a Peugeot, I believe. And uh, so I considered not adding the background because I wanted the cars maybe to be isolated. You have to remember this project was meant to be a book. Like it still is a picture book that I'll sell in a, in a hard copy, maybe a hardcover copy. Um, I don't know, just a fun project for me to do and, and to accomplish. A very selfish one, and if people are interested in getting it, perfect. Um, but So I was wondering whether I should keep a background or not, uh, and I decided to keep it, and you will see background in many of these. I think it will work out really nicely. But in any case, this is the first one. Very proud of some aspects of it, mainly my determination to keep uh, polishing up the details. Uh, you see that I worked pretty much section in section really hard, making sure everything works on an individual basis, okay? 
first one. Now for the second one, I did want to get a bit more flow. This is a BMW against the light, light coming from the front. And I know not everyone's interested in cars, so forgive me if you aren't. Um, it's more about the underlying theme of style here. So try and take it to this place if you can. And if not, again, my apologies, there will be more. But I actually found out by mistake that this is a great opportunity to see that progression. So this is me attempting to have more flow. And you can actually see it in the background. This is all one shape. And it's truly one shape. If you look at this thing here, it goes down, connects to these two uh, little lines, and then it goes back to this car. So it is, in fact, one connected wash. Same for this car and its shadow. Same for this car and its shadow. But you will notice something. I kind of messed up the wet and wet balance here, uh, timing. Because the paint kind of, and again, this is a lot of it is subjective. You may think this is perfect and that's great. I just n simply know what my intention was. So I can say I messed it up a bit here. Uh, I messed up the, the, the timing on the lines to get the result I want. And the result is a little overworked. I went one wash too far too. So you see a bit of the under wash here and a bit of the uh, more muted wash I put above it. Uh, so that's, one thing that I feel I kind of messed up here. I was like, come on, I have to get the flow right. Uh, and I did get more flow, but I will say the composition is a little strange because I didn't focus on the car. I focused on the car in the shadow. And this line here to me right now seems a little excessive, um, a little too much in your face. Here's the separation between the car and the shadow. Uh, so I already am awakened to things that I did back then that I would change now. Uh, and this was, I don't even remember when it was, but I'm, I've been doing it for about a year, I guess, something like this, very rough guess. This is actually a picture, based on a picture from Italy, from a, um, a truck I took a picture of in, um, it was, I'm not sure if it was Sorrento or the way to Sorrento, we drove through a different place that, that where the airport is, I forgot its name. But what you see here is interesting. What you see here is, again, this determination to add more details and to make things perfect. So after going too dark on this side of the truck, I go back with opaque paint and you can see it. It's a little milky. Can you see it? It's a little milky and you can tell that I used uh, white uh, John Brilliant straight out of the tube. Um, and the cool thing about this one is, let me see that you can go back to the desk settings. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, okay. So I just wanted to make sure that you can see things properly. Um, so yeah, I, I did want to make sure that I get the right value and it was too dark, went again over it with a milky kind of wash and, and I'm actually very happy with it. But if you notice, there is a very strong and abrupt change between this red and the black here that characterizes the lower half of the truck. Now let me close the window a bit. I want you to better see. I don't know, the light is a little strange. Okay, so I always have this issue this time of day. Hopefully now you can see it a little better. Um, so yeah, here it goes. Um, one thing that, that that is very strong here is that separation. And I don't like it as much, that specific aspect, because I do aim for getting the, the, the emphasis put on the right areas. And to me, that takes up a lot of our attention. Plus, this black is really flat. There isn't much depth to it. And you can see here. Uh, what I do love is this section for sure. Now, here's where I corrected this issue. So again, here it was a very flat black shadow. And yes, there is a slight difference in value between the shadow and the front of the car, but it's very gentle. But here, you can better see it. Here you can really see within the shadow. And it's funny how the previous painting kind of dictates what you want to achieve with the next one. Uh, so it's cool to see that kind of, I remember wh where my mindset was at the time. Um, so you'll see this beautiful kind of uh, transition. And one more thing is getting the timing perfect on this shadow, because this is a curved kind of transition. It's not sharp. It shouldn't be sharp. It's a curved edge to the car, if I'm not mistaken. It's not like this. You see here, it's a very sharp edge. But here, on the other hand, it's a very curved transition. So getting that wet and wet here was imperative. The way I did it was actually by pre-wetting this area and then putting in, in the right timing, uh, this wash. So a very challenging technical feat. Sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you won't. That's just the reality here. Let me get this closer, a bit closer. Uh, the reality is sometimes you'll get it, sometimes you won't, and that's fine. But here I uh, thank my lucky stars it worked out. Now here you'll see something a little different. And to be honest with you, this is definitely one of my favorites of this challenge. Um, 
Uh, I believe I shared it also in a video, so you have seen a picture of it. And of course, for all of these pictures, just go to Instagram, you'll see a higher quality one. Uh, but this, it's just, what attracted me here was all this play of light and shadow. So you get light within the shadow and then shadow within the light. And I love that kind of a thing. And here, it was very important for me to make sure that all of this merges down with the, the, the bottom, the pavement, the road, whatever that is and not get that hard edge you've seen before. Why? Because I want the attention to be here. I want it to be here where the sharp lines are and not here. Okay, so, and, and you'll notice I also incorporated that aspect of getting the shadow to be rich and deep by not going fully black. You can see within this shadow as well. You can see that it's dark here and it goes lighter here. Uh, so that's another thing I wanted to really achieve with this one. Uh, so let me uh, see what you're saying in the chat here. Just see if I can answer some questions. Um, if there's anything interesting, I'll go through it and then we'll continue. Um, da -da -da -da. Enjoying all of your sessions. Thank you so much, uh, Rebecca. Uh, especially connecting values. Good. That's a big, big one. I'm, I'm big on that. Uh, Chantel, I'm grateful for your encouragement for practice specific, for practicing specific skills. Glazing technique will be helpful. Will do. Nettie, I like the high contrast and color on the cars with the muted backgrounds. Yeah, that, I like that too. I like that aspect. Kelvin, simple background contrast well with the detail of the car. Direct sunlight, probably noontime. Yeah, that's always the, the case here. I'm gonna make the air condition a little stronger. That's always the case here. Soon I'll be able to open the blinds again. Sorry about that. Uh, Ian, maybe a softer version of the background in the first car, but don't take the background out completely. Uh, the milkiness of the shadow gives impression of reflected light. Yeah, that's it's an interesting one. It's, it could be an interesting way of achieving that effect. Uh, Ian, that's interesting. We don't always know how far we uh, have gotten until we look back and see. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You have to look at this really in retrospect. And by the way, I haven't even gotten to 50 cars. I'm still in 44. Uh, Les Sanchez, can you tell us about the source of light for number three? Uh, so number three, um, was it this one? Yeah, so the light comes straight from uh, the front in front of us, it's, we're painting against the light. So you get the shadows casting towards us. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it's a little, it's a bit of a weird one, I know, uh, a bit confusing. Uh, Kelvin Zero, the yellow car is beautiful. Thank you, Daiji, my friend, welcome aboard. Yeah, you made it. I like the values on the yellow card, looks like the under, uh, the low afternoon sun. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was actually. Marjorie Johnson, because I always question if one more glaze will bring a painting where I want it, I've decided to snap a photo and then just go for it. Yes, yes, that's a great, great uh, way to go about it. Uh, I also went as far as painting the same painting simultaneously and seeing if I can achieve the different results simultaneously. That's also a fun way of doing it. Uh, Kelvin says the yellow car is beautiful. Oh yeah, I read that. Marjorie, I read that. Kelvin, I need to start painting with intention. I never put much thought into my painting. Yeah, that, that's a big one. I can really uh, improve your work. And, and it's also a good measuring stick to know if you're able to execute your intentions. So if you're, uh, if you say you'll get one thing and you end up not getting it and multiply that by five times or 10 attempts or however many attempts you do, there is a recurring issue that you may want to work on. Okay. So next car, and by the way, this was number six. So now we're at number seven. Uh, this one for me, again, the front is a little overworked, but the, the background here was the thing that excited me about this scene. It was actually a building and then a very crowded square. If you kind of squint your eyes, you may be able to see it. Uh, but yeah, again, a bit of overwork and kind of not enough focus on this transition from shadow to cast shadow. Um, something that, that is important. This is easy. These sharp lines are easy. That transition is rough. Uh, so here's another one, a bit different feel to it. Um, a little looser here. What you'll notice, and this is very interesting. Look at the road. I actually painted that after the tires. So you see that lack of flow. If you compare it to, uh, let's say something like, like any of the ones I showed you so far. Um, this isn't a good example, actually. Um, I don't even know if I have something with the ground paint. I will have some later on, but you do see that I added the background later on because there is this sharp edge between the two. And I'm showing you this because a lot of people dislike that look and a lot of people, me included, myself included, sometimes were proponents of flow, always, as much as possible. 
not necessarily. It is fine if once in a while you do something that, or, or if that's what you like, you do something that you can see the separation. Not all watercolor has to flow. I do have a very sharp edge here that should have been blended. Um, not everything, this should have been blended in my opinion because this is all loose and it's too sharp, it's too strong. I don't need that section. All I need is this, maybe this area and the shadow here. Um, but in case, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Paint in small areas, small sections, fragments. And even if you get a result that is slightly fragmented, that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna turn on the swing because I barely feel this thing. Um, okay, so next one. So here, this was interesting. I believe I was sent this photo uh, by a follower, though I'm not sure and I couldn't remember who I do have documentation of it, so I could find uh, find out. Now this one from afar looks great in my opinion, but it's, it's okay, so the, the photo, uh, I was sent two versions of it, blue, kind of strong blue and, and black and white, I believe, or maybe I turned it black and white. And there's a lot here. This is probably one of the most, um, multiple brush marks, like the most brush marks I made and small details I made. And I did that on purpose. And this is the key here. I did not do it because I wanted to keep adding more details, keep adding more details and whoops, it's overworked and I messed it up. This was actually deliberate. I wanted to see how far I can take the nuances of the chromatic surface of the top of the car um, with just adding more and more brush marks. Uh, can I uh, express it with multiple details and still have it look good and interesting or does it have to be done in minimal washes uh, and I'm very happy that I did this experiment um, here's an interesting one so here I felt like and funny enough of course after a black and white work you go for the colorful route and here I felt like doing um, a bit more of a unique color scheme so you see mostly orange and greenish kind of muted it's a secondary uh, palette basically no one of my favorite parts here is actually the ruggedness of the bottom. You see all of these, these dry brush marks that the shadow was painted in, they give, they tell the story of the road and it was not intentional. I wasn't intending for it, but it ended up just happening. It tells you that, that the surface of the road is uneven uh, and all of these little sparkles here and, and around the edge, I love that kind of a thing. You'll notice I got the timing on the background kind of off. Okay, now just to bring it back, like if you're wondering why are we going through my car paintings, I want to show you a, a vector of change that I've been going through with my paintings in a direction I believe um, is a strong, another strong pillar of how I want to create for now. So there's contrast and all of that strength, but there's another thing and, and hint, it's flow. Okay, I'm giving you the answer now, but we will talk about it in just a few minutes again uh, in more detail. So. Look at the background here. It was very important for me to have that as one shape. So I put in a bit of blue and then immediately put the shadows of the uh, green. And I don't even mind these gaps that shouldn't be here. Uh, and you can tell they, they were, it's just a mistake. I wasn't accurate enough, but it still looks kind of good. And you can always cover these up gently after the fact. But the key here was let's merge all of the background. And actually, I believe I did that after the car. If I'm not mistaken, I painted the car and the shadow under it. And then I put in the background, if I'm not mistaken. It could be that I put the background and then the shadow in. You know what, I don't remember. Uh, but in any case, I love this one. I love this strength here of blue, yellow and red. Because our license plates here have yellow uh, and then blue next to them on the, on the left corner. And then the red of the tail lights and it just works really well together. So flow, you see a lot of that motif here. Another one. So this one, <laughs> it's funny. This one I'm proud of this car right over here. This is an interesting, I guess, experiment in focus um, because this car, it's not what it looked like. Uh, this, it looks like a ghost car almost, but that actually is interesting because I like it. I like how I did it uh, and that I didn't go another layer with it. And you do see it in this one that I already showed you again with the background. It's kind of burnt out. So it's an interesting thing here. It's not the background, but it's the car next to it. Um, I'm still trying to achieve some flow here with the tires and the shadow. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You'll notice a very clear separation here, but then a very smooth transition here, okay? So that's interesting. Now we're getting to one of my favorites, really, uh, this one. So what I did like about this one, and you'll find often again, the previous car dictates what I wanna experiment next. Uh, the color scheme here is very much 
kind of brown, red, and blue. So I wanted to do something a little stronger in terms of temperature differences. And this was, this is, I love the, this car. I think it's a Nissan Juke, if I'm not mistaken. I just like this model. It paints really nicely because of the, the headlights and the taillights. They're kind of beveled outside. It's very interesting. Um, so here you really get to see like a strong play of warm and cool. That time of day, there was a lot of reflected light from the ground onto the bottom of the car. So you get a lot of this yellowy kind of strong light. Um, and here's something interesting. So this shadow is very nice. It's a big shape of blue and then yellow, but you'll notice the tires are separate. And again, I'm gonna give you a sneak kind of peek at the last one that we'll look at that I'm extra proud of. Uh, where was it now? We'll get to it soon. So this one, and, and just look at the difference in the tires, in the approach of the tires. You see how they're blended differently? So we'll get to that. So I'm experimenting with the flow, but more in the context of temperature differences, okay? This one I'm very happy with, and maybe I'll run through these a little faster, but it's just every, every one of these has a story to them. But this one I'm very, I think the colors are perfect. This is the one of my most perfect color harmonies here. The, the thing it's lacking in is, look at this separation here. It's a little too strong for me. Um, but the background is perfect. I love that yellow ochre. This is why I love yellow ochre. You know it. I love yellow ochre and blue and green. French ultramarine, how they create together the green. That's really nice. This one's highly realistic. Worked very slowly, very deliberately on it. Uh, put a lot of care in it. And sometimes you're, again, luck of the draw. Sometimes it'll be good. Uh, the result will be nice, even if you work slowly and very measured. Um, and, and it will even have flow to it. Even though uh, you think to yourself for flow, I need to work a little more freely. This was a relatively tight work, but it still worked out. I was still managed to, I still managed to blend all the edges I wanted to keep things here kind of blended. So yeah. And you'll notice the key thing I'm focusing here on is the um, the composition, and by the way, look at the same, almost same background color, the composition of hard and soft edges. Okay, that's the, the key idea here, I think. Uh, so let me see what you're writing in the chat. Hopefully it makes sense. The things I'm, the words I'm speaking hopefully make sense. Uh, Marco, hi, are you around here? Uh, late here again, come on, 66, watching it over only 38 likes. Yeah, please leave a like. Uh, Rakshan, my friend, is here. How are you doing? Uh, you ask, who is my favorite artist? It's That's got to be me. Uh, Dave, I've been wanting to paint cars from seeing yours. There's actually a garage near my home that specializes in American cars. I should start, maybe not 100 low. Yeah, just go there and paint one. Plein air. Best, best thing you can do. Uh, Les Sanchez, thank you for this live. Thank you for being here. Nancy G, have you always loved cars and traveling? Uh, did you travel often with your family when you were younger? Great car painting. So, um, cars, I... Uh, it's funny, I really don't know much about cars. I never, and I'm gonna flip through a couple of these, they don't matter as much, but I was never really into cars. I couldn't care less about engines and, and, and motors, the, however you call them, and, and different uh, replacement parts. I know a lot of people are interested in that kind of thing. Not me, not in brands, not in anything, maybe Tesla, just because, I don't know, they're innovating and stuff, but I, I never really cared about cars per se. I do love, for some reason, the way they look. Uh, and strong sunlight, so it's it's so random, I know, but but it's not about the subject itself. It's really about the the way it looks going beyond what it is. So I don't know. It's a funny thing. You can not really be interested in one aspect of a thing and be interested in another. So I do want to take a quick kind of thing here and show you. If you remember, I painted this one on a YouTube video, and this one too, and the the approach was just freedom of colors going rainbow style and everything is just whatever color you want and I really like that approach and you can start seeing hints of me merging everything together the background and the car and the shadow something that is not easy to do um, so we'll skip these two this is 21 22 yeah we're good here you can see a bit of like let's go for a specific color scheme that is not realistic but just interesting so you get a blue and red I think that's really cool uh, and this is a more realistic take. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, Mark, I really like the headlights on the black and white one. Oh, thank you. Uh, Los Angeles, don't forget to hit the like button once this live ends. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, Lori Huber, hey everyone, welcome aboard. Uh, we need a Ruth cameo. So Ruth is probably hanging out on the rooftop. There's a barbecue going on. Um, 
Alessandro, hi, I love the background of the white car painting, these trees, thank you. Um, yeah, very loose trees. Uh, oh, black and white and colored. Coincidentally, I watched a YouTube uh, uh, vid, I guess, a few days back. One technique is to take the photo of your painting, turn it black and white on your camera. If it looks good, then probably it's already done, but it's not uh, appealing enough in black and white. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I agree. So this is something I always recommend uh, doing when I talk about plein air. Take a picture of the reference photo, look at it black and white, and look for large shapes of value. If you don't have them, if it's just a jumbled up mess, it probably won't be as fun or interesting to paint. Probably, with some exceptions. Arthur Kirkman, I like the colors in the Nissan Duke. Uh, Kevin Zero, it's amazing how you manage to combine the blue and yellow without getting green. Yeah, uh, yeah, Arthur, I believe it's Duke, um, but who knows? Yeah, it's Duke, uh, Dave says. Uh, Vanessa, I'm so enjoying you talking about your cars. Like them all. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Arthur. Francis Lee, good day to you. Good day to you, Francis. I hope you're doing well. Uh, your art keeps getting better and better. Very interesting. And right, interesting. I never thought about cars for light studies, but they are actually quite useful. A mix of straight edges and curves. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that's exactly it. Uh, Laurie Huber, my favorite car uh, I had was a 78 Apple Red Ford Cougar with white leather interior. Cool. Sounds really nice. Uh, and Ryan, the sky facing faces get interesting light too. Yeah, that's true. Sky facing or I will say, well, it depends on the time of day, but just faces in general. Uh, John says, always love your car paintings. Your recent one where you nailed that flow was awesome. Thank you. That's exactly the one we're getting at. Uh, Vivan Gupta. Hello, Liron. I love to see your car paintings. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the kind words because I do know not everyone's into cars. But if you look at the, the difference, for example, between these two, more kind of fun on the color side and then more realistic approach. What do you notice when you switch from more of this to the realistic? Realistic barely has any strong colors. It really is natural colors that you find outside are very much muted. And so the, the key is to get the nuance of color. And it's not easy. It's not easy at all to get them to look right and, and to get the right amount of uh, temperature. Just the right amount, you know, uh, based maybe on a, on a scale of eight maybe levels or so, or six levels. It is a challenge. Uh, so yeah, more realistic. Let's see if my realistic streak continues. No, here's again, more expressive colors. This was fun. A bit more of an illustrative approach, really spelling out those lines. Um, this was nice because it's the first car I do in side view. Uh, and I'm very happy with this because there was reflected light from underneath. So you end up with a strong shadow here and a slightly lighter bottom part. Um, smaller, it's smaller too. So a bit fewer details that I could include here, um, but I'm very pleased with the red here. Uh, and this, this is funny, I did a larger painting of this very same scene. What number are we at? 27, good. Um, I did a larger version of this scene, so I was already familiar with it. Um, the process here was more of glazes based. So I did one glaze covering everything but the highlights that you see here. And if I'm not mistaken, I used masking fluid either masking fluid or masking tape here. And you can see this because I did get quite clean edges here. Uh, I really painted freely over these. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can tell. I used uh, masking. I think it was even masking tape, uh, though I'm not sure. Uh, but in case, yeah, fun experiment. Uh, I think it looks good. Here's another one with fairly realistic colors. Um, but a bit of a hint of maybe the sunlight and the lens flare kind of influencing the colors here but I still like this one a lot. This is a little more recent. Um, this I think has a pretty dang good balance of sharp lines and then smoother areas. And where do I see this the most? Funny enough here, in this rooftop of the car. In the past, it would have been a no brainer for me to just make this a harsh line and say, okay, it's blended here, right? This shadow and the shadow underneath is blended. The car at the back is blended. Let's keep this a harsh edge, but no, this turned out to be a genius decision. It's just luck. I wasn't planning for it. Uh, I think I was just kind of at the spur of the moment. Let's, let's blend this edge and it worked out really well because it distracts you from here over to here. It supports this, this moves you here. This moves you here further strengthening the Mercedes logo right in the center. And this is, I think the major win for this painting in particular. Um, this one I felt like really I messed up at the time, not clear enough on what I wanted to achieve here. And sometimes that's what you get when you're not clear enough on the goal, uh, I suppose. But yeah, that's fine. 
Here's another one. You may recognize this one because I did a tiny thumbnail version of it, but I wouldn't expect you to with a few cars in a parking lot, very tiny, tiny version of it. Everything flows well together. This is against the light, a very nice kind of a scene. Colors are muted, which is very fun. Now I'm gonna show you three that I showed you, uh, I believe together, was it? Um, or was it this one? I don't even remember, but this one, I believe it came with, um, I think it was these three that I painted together and I have shown you in a YouTube video, so I'm not gonna go too deep on the details here, uh, but very happy with them. In terms of realism, this one is the most realistically colored one. Uh, these are a little more expressive. I exaggerated the blue, exaggerated the orange, but this one is a little more expressive and I used a bit of a different approach for each of these. There's actually, again, a video on it um, on the channel. This is a bunch of cars from above. Kind of messy, kind of messy. Uh, not really the thing I was aiming for colors wise. And I, I to this point, I'm, I still can't tell what I should have changed in the process. I know what's inaccurate, obviously, but I don't know, this kind of a thing really challenges me. Now I wanna show you something fun because this one I have shown you on YouTube. When I look at this, and let's connect it to style. When I look at this, I see myself trying with all my might to create something that looks realistic, even at the expense of technique and flow. And this is why this one initially frustrated me a lot because I was like, I can't get it right. I know I'm messing up the flow. I know this doesn't look good. And yes, I've shown this one in the YouTube video as well. Um, so it kind of frustrated me, but Ultimately, when you look at it from afar, yes, it does make sense. Yes, it, it does look realistic, quite realistic from afar. And again, it shows you, you don't have to be that, um, that much into just technique and just flow. And that's the counter argument here. Um, but this is another step in the, in the way because I'm gonna show you how I connect both the accuracy and the flow. Okay, again, for the last one. Uh, this is a realistic one. Talked about this quite in detail, I think. Um, put a lot of effort into this one, getting just the right values, just the right colors, and I do think the realistic impression is there. Hopefully you do too. Uh, I've shown you this taxi, uh, this one too, I painted in the same in the same city. The cool thing about this one in particular is uh, this little exaggerated light sparkling and moving into the shadow here. But again, I wouldn't say too much uh, progress necessarily between these two, but look at this one. It's just a big mess, just a big, big mess. Didn't know what I was going to, wanted, wanting to achieve. Look at these blues here all over, big mess. This one, on the other hand, you have seen, you're on YouTube, great flow, connected the background, and I've shown you how to make use of those flow points, flow gates to connect everything together. So that's a great example. But here we come to the last two that I've done so far, and I'm just gonna set everything aside. Take a few moments to talk about these, uh, answer your questions and then we'll wrap it up. So, and by the way, don't ask me why this corner is missing. I'll just say, because um, that's the way I had a big piece of paper. I think it was something like this. And I decided to cut it in two and use this even though the corner here was missing because I cut it in a different, it's a long story. But in any case, yeah, this was from the get, I knew that this corner is gonna be missing. So just a funny little thank you. This to me is perfection. And I don't mean that this is the right way to do things. I mean, to me, right now, the moment in time we're at, this is what I want to achieve in my watercolors. The, just the right balance of, you can tell it's watercolor, you can tell it's flowy, you can tell all of the connections. Um, and let me further explain why I think this is so such a success for me personally. Mainly, I would say because I use the same technique for portraits. If you remember, I showed you that a la prima technique. Um, kind of crazy way of painting portraits. And you know what, for this one, I am gonna get the picture. I believe I should have it uh, here. Maybe I don't, I'll transfer it for, over from my phone, but I think I may have it. Uh, and bear with me. Uh, I know this is a very specific topic we're uh, discussing today. Oh, my computer is slow as heck. Uh, let's see here, just a second. Okay, so I don't seem to have it, so let me just bring it over. Um, I, have, I have too much stuff on my uh, computer and I, do, I definitely need to uh, empty it a bit. And by the way, I'll bring a picture with the reference photo as well, so this will be cool. Uh, so let me just, give me one second to uh, open it. Uh, image, 
let's get it. Okay, oops, why did it cancel? One second. And I think we uh, got it, maybe? Yeah, okay, we got it. We got it, so give me just a second. Image. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's me uh, not being too tech savvy. That's fine. I'm gonna make sure it's rotated the right way. Da, 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 da. Close it, open it. Uh, yeah, my computer is a little slow. I put way too many stuff on it. I recently downloaded a lot of things and didn't get the chance to properly clean it up. Um, so hopefully it won't like jam the stream or something, but yeah. Okay, here we go. So this is a picture of it that shows it, I think much more uh, accurately and the reference photo. And it's uh, funny, I censored one of the cars and I forgot to, <laughs> to censor the other one. I don't know if it's even necessary, but just for the heck of it, let's do this. Let's get rid of it, even though everyone saw it. So yeah, one second. I'll uh, just get a square and put it on it so that you can't see the license plate. Even though, I, don't, I guess, who cares? I don't think anyone cares. But anyway, here we go. Uh, so yeah, so this shows you uh, both of these. Now, again, the thing here is same approach for an Alla Prima portrait I did for the car. And this is, remember, that's the breakthrough I was talking about to get the same effect, uh, very similar to... Um, painting again Alla Prima portraits of starting with one edge and the way I did it, I'm just gonna move this aside a bit. I started with uh, the top here, moved all the way around and then connected it to the shadow and connected it to the window and connected it to the tail lights and connected it to the ground even. Everything is connected. Uh, and to me that is perfection. Now if you compare it to something like this, it feels to me like we're looking at two vastly different works in terms of skill level. Now it's not really accurate because it's just been maybe a year. So yes, I do improve, but I don't know if it's this much improvement, but look at the, the, the thing here. Let me, let me get rid of this for a moment because that's the crux of this video. To me, this feels like me trying to literally paint every detail I see correctly, literally paint it. And it's the same thing I talked about in the critiques video, literally painting each and every detail. And if you're good at it, you will get a good result. If you're careful, and you're deliberate, you will get a good result. But this is going beyond that. This is really enforcing and, 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 and maybe even forcing my vision on the reference and forcing it to look the way I want. Um, so this is me making a statement. The tires here are not important. The, the bottom, the shadow, the, the, the license plate, the, even the taillights are not as important as the overall connectedness of everything. And to me, that's uh, one of the most perfect balances I was able to strike, sorry, between getting accurate details, timing of wet and wet, all of that, and also connecting it physically to have it flow. That's the key. This is the trajectory I feel like I've been going through. Moving from this towards this, away from this and more towards this. It's very random. I'll not always be able to do this. I was able to do it here on the next car as well. This is the last one, actually. This is number 40. I didn't write, but this is 43. So this is 44. Let me add that now. I won't forget. So 44 has that same quality, in my opinion, here. Even though it's a big mess. It's a, it's a lesser attempt at the same thing if you compare it to this one. But it still has that. It still has that thing. And to me... That's the thing I strive for. And when you look at all of these cars and you look at the, look at this one, for example, here, you can see it in the corner. Look at this one. It's me trying to find it, trying to find a balance. And it's not easy. Here I kind of was able to strike it, but not here and not the colors and not, you know, every small aspect of it. All of these converge successfully to what you see here on the screen. And to me, that's the most interesting part. And I do think that looking back on your older paintings, comparing them to the new ones is, can be a great motivational boost. It is, I think, a good method of figuring out where your style is headed. And you will you'll never, I think, be able to fully control where your style is going and saying, this is what I want. This is how I want to do it. You're at the mercy of a lot of different factors. What you can do is completely devote yourself to the process of improving. 
completely devote yourself to practicing those fundamentals, practicing the specific skills, really working on, uh, on constantly challenging yourself to paint different subject matters. And again, I didn't uh, return to that point. I, was, I talked about subject matter too. Yes, the subject matter. Sometimes you'll recognize someone's art just by the subject matter. Um, so, so it was another point that I forgot from earlier. But in any case, this is the crux of it, in my opinion. Um, all you can do is really devote yourself to the endeavor of learning and practicing the fundamentals and then constantly bringing yourself outside your comfort zone to paint in a style that's different from yours because it will feed back into your own style and will enrich it. Um, and I think many people are stuck in the fundamentals. So what I mean by that is you don't need to continue painting whatever you want. You actually need to stop and work on a specific skill, work on value matching, work on drawing accurately, work on compositions and making sure that everything is subservient to the composition. Everything in the painting has to serve the greater purpose of the composition. You can't have elements fighting among one another. You really want to have everything serving that same purpose. And that sometimes means lack of focus here, more blended here, um, stronger contrast there, stronger uh, piece of paint over here. It, it, and all of these decisions you make, you need to take a few steps back and ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? What composition am I, am I trying to do? What do I want the viewer to focus on? And to do that, you have to practice the fundamentals. So I will argue that a lot of the, the also the paintings I critique in my videos, it's a fundamentals issue. It's not really an issue of technique. It's not an issue of, um, and when I say technique, make the separation between being able to slowly match the value to being able to get an even wash. Those are two different things. Yes, even wash is technique. And yes, also mixing the right value is a technique, but it's a very basic technique because the mistake is not due to lack of um, motor skills for most people. It's not like you lack the motor skill to grab a, enough paint. It's about, can you actually tell you made a mistake in the value? Can you actually tell you got it wrong? Because if you can tell it, go dip the brush into the stronger black paint and put more of it into the mix. So yeah, sometimes it's a matter of courage. Sometimes it's a matter of technique maybe, but for the most part, what I find it's not none of those. It's actually really understanding, did I get it right or did I not? And yes, there is room after that to doing a lot of other things that aren't just techniques. There's a weird scratch on my uh, cutting mat. I don't know what it is. Uh, or maybe it's a light. I don't know. Yeah, it's light. Okay. <laughs> so there is, there is place for creativity. There is place for innovation. But I would argue a lot of people are kind of stuck in that initial um, fundamental stage. And I will say one more thing. I do think that a lot of people kind of pigeonhole themselves into a specific style because they're comfortable with the technique that accompanies it. For example, a lot of wet and wet or a lot of whatever it can be. Uh, many, many things. And I would want to push you outside of that if possible. Okay. Uh, so these are my two cents for today. Um, be deliberate in your practice. Let me see what you're saying in the chat real quick and then we'll wrap it up. I hope that helps. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I hope it's again, me figuring out things. So it's, it's not going to be clear insights. I'm just showing you the trajectory, but really, I think it is important to see that, uh, the, the kind of transition from these two, from this one to these two. Okay. And you, you can tell it's just a different level of different, um, different level of skill. Um, so yeah, that's just, it's a fun little thing to look back in. And this is my, uh, uh, little piece of paper to make sure I talk about everything. Uh, so let me see what you're saying in the chat real quick. Then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Lori Uber, my favorite car. We talked about that. All right. Da, da, da. John. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Vivan. Uh, Adi Ruda, I joined in a bit late. How long ago did you start your 100 car project? Yeah, so it was about a year ago, I think. Uh, Dave, do you drive the run? What car do you have? So uh, obviously in Tel Aviv, not a lot of places to park the car. Uh, at the moment, I, I have like a car. It actually is my parents' car, but it is parked here. But usually, it's not here. I don't. I barely, barely drive. But it is a Mazda, like a Mazda three, like a relatively older model. Um, I did like the first car that was really mine uh, before I moved to Tel Aviv. Uh, I had a Kia Mentor two. Um, really, uh, at the time it was nice, but today it's uh, kind of crappy. Uh, plus, I don't know. We don't really take good care of cars here. Um, which is a shame. The, the parts I think are a little more, I know nothing about cars again, but I think the parts are a little more expensive and there's 
there's always this uh, incentive to buy new cars and it's a part of the culture, which I don't like. A part of like the, you are your car in a way. You're like, you're as successful as uh, your car and how fancy it is. So I don't know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not interested in that. I like to basically walk and I can get to pretty much most places around me like that. But uh, yeah, not a big car guy here, except for when in art, funny enough. And right, you can get them uh, in any uh, light, basically. So I missed the context. Uh, blah, 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 is, uh, e um, is that it's so easy to get? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's so easy to get cars as a reference. It's just, they're everywhere. Uh, and I do like the, the shapes that, that are created. Sharp and smooth uh, due to the curves of the cars. Nettie, thank you for doing these live stream videos. Thank you so much for being here. By the way, some people would argue that uh, figurative uh, painting is the same as cars. You get smooth edges for round transitions, sharp edges for maybe the more um, elbows and, and, and um, uh, joints and stuff like that. Uh, the thing with figurative is that, again, you don't have an end endless supply of references. It's very different from cars that you can just take pictures outside. Plus, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not as much of a figurative slash portrait guy as much as I am like a cityscape um, kind of person. So, yeah. Javi Jab, how do you store your paintings? Do you keep them stacked like you have now or are they in individual sleeves? Stacked. I keep them stacked. But these are in one bag because it's the same project. So, yeah. Um... Uh, thanks, greetings from Chicago. Ian, Leron, I challenge you to paint a formula sports car moving or still. Yeah, I'll be happy to. I should get to it uh, at some point. Uh, Glowing Skull YouTube says, one very bad thing happened to me. Please help me, Leron. Uh, found uh, my whole set of watercolors is attacked by mold. Ooh, um, I actually don't know how to deal with that. I think Tio has a video on the topic. Tio, be sure to check out his channel. I'm going to link it. Um, I know like Tio's audience is way bigger, so you probably most of you know him, but uh, yeah, let's let's link him. I do think Tio had a video on it. I'm sorry that I don't have a good answer. Uh, I wish I have. I never got mold in my palettes, uh, and I do think it is partially due to weather conditions. Some some areas are more prone to that. Uh, but sorry to hear. Uh, and Ryan, the loose car is cool because the interiors are not distracting. You can jump right through the center of the main subject without distractions. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly my point. Cool. Yeah, I that, that's exactly it. I'm happy you see it. Uh, Vanessa, do you have some issues with the sun moving when painting in plein air? Do you have any tips? Uh, Vanessa, you just have to work fast sometimes when you're painting outside uh, to deal with that, to account for that. Uh, very often what I'll do is just take a picture uh, in, so I can use it later as reference for the light and shadow while still seeing the object the buildings the trees whatever but i can see i can remember what they looked like by taking a photo uh, it is a problem sometimes i'll try to make it before sun moves and i will recommend one thing uh, try painting close to maybe noon when the sun is high up in the sky if you paint especially like afternoon late afternoon when it starts to set it's a nightmare and the light disappears immediately and it'll be you'll have a very hard time at capturing what you want uh, Chantel says, I like your leadership of showing us how you look for uh, good in your paintings. Careful and thoughtful critique. Thank you so much. Um, Warcore says, yeah, I'm sorry, glowing skull YouTube. I don't have a good solution for that. Did you search YouTube for, for it? Maybe some other people uh, talked about it. I do see um, put an SSD into your laptop if you still have HDD. How do I check that? Can I check that? Let's see. System, not system, about this Mac. Let's see what I have here. Uh, so non-technical sometimes. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm sure someone will be able to know just by looking at it. At some point, I just bailed on technology in terms of like computers and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I could definitely improve it. It's just a space. I have so much, so much crap on my Mac. Uh, I will I will do a long cleanup session. Nancy G, thanks again, Leroy. Love your vids. Thank you. Julie says, lovely. Thank you, Kelvin. The ref photo looks really weird. Um, I don't know why. Interesting. I don't know why it looks weird. Uh, and right, excellent that you didn't waste time in the wheels details. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a second. Oh, Ray, how are you doing? Sending us, uh, sending me hand emojis. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, I think one possibly next step will be finding expression in highlights because the taillight bleeding and bright clean yellow of the license plate can give much atmosphere. Yeah, I agree. 
I agree to that. That could be an interesting kind of next step or thing to explore. The red bleeding in the back frames, uh, the back plane of the car perf uh, frames the back plane of the car perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, I was aiming for something like that. I'm happy it turned out nicely. And I also did this swoosh to the other side, swoosh to this direction to smear the yellow around the red around a bit. Composition is the most difficult thing to understand. Yeah, and there is no right answers. It's just you learn what looks good and what doesn't look as good, what works and what doesn't work. There are a few concepts like tangent lines that you want to avoid, stuff like that, but yeah. Uh, Dave says, great lively run, very useful. Thank you for your time and talent. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Timothy uh, uh, Knopf, Knopfler, sorry, I never know if to pronounce the K or not. Uh, you're inspiring me a lot. I love seeing the progress you describe and explain. Thank you so much. Right, like drawing them as if in motion. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going for. Uh, Glowing says, bye. Sorry, I couldn't help. Kelvin, I'm trying to learn about composition by watching Ian Roberts' channel, but sadly everything just flew above my head. Uh, Ian Roberts, let's, let's, I don't know who that is, but I will take a look. Uh, Ian Roberts' watercolor, and we will have to wrap it up soon. Uh, we should have wrapped it up like 13 minutes ago. Uh, John says, thanks for uh, another great live stream. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ian Bobros did not want, uh, did not want his bubble hair, but that was the brand, so he stick to it, yeah. Uh, Sanchez has been painting primarily birds, but discovering you here in YouTube changed that. Thank you. And yeah, birds are a great thing for practice too, and a great thing to see the progression, just like the cars I'm sharing with you here. Um, so yeah, Mark still, yeah, it's, it's got up, it's gotten up, uh, to 61. Thank you so much, Mark, for the uh, encouragement. Um, Aparna says, artists are mainly introvert. What are you? I think I'm kind of a mix. Uh, it's hard for me to say one or the other, but I am a bit introverted. Yes, I feel great sometimes just being by myself or with very close people, not like party mode or stuff like that. Yes, I definitely have an aspect of introversion. Julie, thank you so much for sharing your journey as you paint. Very interesting and useful. Thank you. Marjorie says that yes, Tio did have uh, a mold. Uh, how do you sell your work, Liron? Uh, you can find it in my gallery, Liron Gallery. Uh, I just sell it there directly. All uh, right. Uh, simply go to LironGallery.com. <laughs> Uh, Kelvin, oh yeah, my palette got attacked by mold a few times, or has never happened, I just clean everything with bleach. Oh, okay, interesting, bleach. Uh, hi, Ray. Um, Ian, let air flow in the palette as much as you can. Sealed paint palettes can make problems. Mm, interesting. So mine is almost always open, which is, I guess, why it works. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. I do want to thank you so, so much for being here. Let me show you my face, a bit big. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here. I got to wrap it up. I'm happy we did not get any alarms, though it would have been interesting to show you what we're going through here. Um, uh, no sirens as of now. There will probably be more at night. Um, once again, I have to thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. This is the best place right now to communicate. Uh, I am making some efforts to communicate on all platforms, but here's the quickest. It's the most efficient. I always say I want to do more live streams and I never get to doing and never get to doing more. Hopefully I will in the near future. Uh, but once again, I love you all. Thank you so, so much for being here. You make what I'm doing possible. Uh, it's just thanks to you. Uh, anyone who's watching, liking, getting the courses, getting, I had huge technical problems uh, with the courses. I fixed them, most of them now. So you can actually get emails once you make a purchase. Uh, I'm trying to balance everything out. It's a bit of a challenge. Uh, I had a few days where it was really hard to be productive. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that'll improve. Thank you so, so much once again. And now we can wrap it up. I will talk to you again real soon. I will see you on Saturday's vid. So until then, take care.